what has happened to the world? I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe and healthy. But maybe your sanity is suffering a little bit because you are cooped up at home all day and the kids are driving you crazy and you are wondering if you will ever get anything done again. So let's talk about ways that you can work from home with little ones. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and this is not the video that I had planned for this week. I was actually going to be sharing some travel tips. Wow, would that have been bad timing. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to be teaching you how to stay sane and work from home with kids. I started this business when Scout was only one, so believe me, even though she's in school now, I completely understand what it is like to be at home all day with a baby and wonder if you will ever finish a sentence or have a complete thought ever again. So here is everything that I have learned about getting stuff done when the smallies are about. First up comes acceptance. Your main job now is to keep a child alive all day, okay? And that can be very physically and mentally demanding because it's like their sole purpose in life is to injure themselves. You're just gonna have to work through those stages of grief as quickly as possible so that you can get yourself to the point where you accept that this is your new reality. It may not be forever, but it is for the foreseeable. So the quicker that you come to terms with that, the better. Things are different now, so you can't expect to have the same level of productivity. I mean, maybe you will. Hopefully you will after taking all these tips on board, but you can't expect it. It took me a long time to learn that and I made plenty of pit stops along the way with all the other stages. Another thing that took me far too long to cotton on to was that I should stop pretending like my daughter didn't exist. You know, I wanted to try and get as much done as I could without her interrupting me. And then when she did interrupt, which was inevitable, I was so frustrated. And then I felt so guilty because I was frustrated. But this one thing changed the game for me and I actually still do it to this day. Kids need attention. And so I learned to give it. I learned to alternate. So instead of just trying to distract her the entire time, I would give her my undivided attention for a set period, and then I would get some work done. So for a certain amount of time, you know, 15, 30 minutes, it was all about her. We would play games, we would eat a meal together, read a book, whatever. And then it was so much easier for her to just continue on and play independently. She didn't feel deprived of attention. You know, she wasn't bored, she wasn't looking for something to do. And I could stop worrying that I wasn't spending quality time with her. If you try and fight kids off, you will be fighting all day long. But if you just give into it and give them your undivided attention for a certain amount of time, then you will both feel better and you can then go do your work and not have that horrible feeling. Another big one for me, and honestly, I do not know why more people don't do this, but it's to get the kids involved. Okay, Scout can't, you know, help me write a blog post or whatever, but she can help me do laundry. She can help me prepare a meal and set the table. She can help me clean. I've even had her take some pictures of me so that I can pop them up on Instagram. And the yeah, benefits of this one are threefold. You actually get an extra pair of hands, okay? They may be a little bit slower than yours, but still, they can be really helpful. Kids like to feel helpful. Two, you both get to spend time together. And three, you are teaching them a valuable life skill that they will eventually be able to do independently, maybe even take it off your plate completely. And this can easily be part of the alternating time thing that I talked about earlier, where, you know, you do something together and then you go do your work. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not great about sitting down for an hour and playing restaurant. But I can play, you match up the socks while I fold the clothes, or you wash your dolls while I wash the dishes. 
that way you are being productive with them instead of trying and inevitably failing to do everything without them. But look, the reality is that you are probably going to have to adjust your schedule so that you are getting things done before they wake up, you know, while they're napping, if they still do that. And if they do, you should thank your lucky stars. Scout stopped napping when she was one and it was a very dark day. And after they go to bed. If you are trying to maintain the same work hours, the same schedule, you're gonna be in trouble. Make the necessary adjustments. It's only temporary and you'll just be working in different blocks of time. Maybe it is, you know, six to nine a.m. and 12 to two and seven to nine p.m. So be it, but setting yourself up with a new schedule would be much more successful than trying to force a nine to five. Right, so your day is going to be broken up into times that you can focus and times that you can't. And you are not going to want to waste any precious time. So make yourself two lists. One for things that you can still get done even when the kids are awake and alert. And then the other one for things that require a little more quiet time so that you can focus. You have no idea how much time I wasted trying to do things like reading and writing, you know, things that required a little bit of concentration while Scout was awake. I would spend all of that time just trying to, you know, push through and inevitably I would end up getting nothing done. And then by the time she did go to bed, I was just too frustrated and frazzled to do anything else. Whereas if I had tackled all the more kind of like mindless autopilot tasks and all the things that she could help with during the day while she was awake, I would have got so much more done. And then when she did go to bed, I would have still had enough energy, enough enthusiasm, enough calmness and collectedness to continue on and focus on the things that required a little bit more attention. So have your lists ready to go so that you will know exactly what you can be doing at any given time during the day. Now, this one might be a little bit controversial, but let standards slip. Let them spend a little more time in front of a screen. Let them eat a little bit more ice cream than they normally would. Let your laundry pile up. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Don't let it get to the point where it like completely stresses you out all the time. Just learn to lean into the chaos a little bit. Your house will be clean again. The kids will go back to school again. Things will return to normal or whatever the new normal will be. You know, this is just a season. It's not a great one, granted, but it is just a season. It will pass and if you have to put some things on the back burner until the good times roll back around, so be it. Now as a control freak and a perfectionist, I know how difficult this one is. I know how hard it is to let go of high standards, but these are not ideal circumstances. So you can't expect ideal outcomes. Just know that you will do your best within the confines of this new crazy situation. And I would encourage you to slow your pace. These days we are so caught up in the rat race that we just forget how to stop. We're always so busy at running and rushing that we think that if we slow down, something terrible is going to happen. Or maybe we've even forgotten that that is an option because we just like we don't know any other way. We've got to the stage where this is normal and we don't know any different. We don't remember that there is another way. But how many businesses are now realizing that, hey, those Monday morning meetings that were so urgent and important beforehand and, you know, like attendance was mandatory, we just canceled them. And the world kept turning. Loads of us are having our plans cancelled and while some of that would probably suck, my parents had to cancel a trip over here to visit us, a lot of it will give us a little bit more breathing space in our schedules. 
it will help to cut out a lot of the crap. I talked about this on Instagram, but it is like restoring yourself to factory settings, you know, stripping away all of the excess, all of the stuff that's slowing you down and just getting back to basic functioning. There is a huge amount of freedom in that. And yes, over time, you can add things back in as you feel that you need and want them. But take this time to reevaluate like, your daily routine, your systems, your processes, and see if there's anything there, anything you have been looking around for years that is just causing you to lag, something that is just draining your energy levels. Especially with your kids, you know, see how you and they feel now that all of their extracurricular activities have been cancelled. Maybe you enjoy the slower pace. Maybe you're realizing that you actually like spending time together. Not everything that's taken away will be a good thing, like I said, but use this time to tune into how you truly feel about things. Sometimes we don't realize how important something is to us until it's gone, right? Um, but equally, sometimes we don't realize how much anxiety something is giving us until it's gone. So notice where you are feeling that relief and then don't reintroduce those things to your life. And remember to rest and recharge too. All of those women out there who seem like they have it all together, spotless homes, doting husbands, polite children, you know, they're all cooking and baking and taking trips to the Cape. Yeah, those people are either lying or they are on a slippery slope to the asylum. And don't be coming at me with like, oh, but such and such a person on Instagram. Are you kidding me? I would rather get an extra hour's sleep than have sparkling floors. You know, if, if this terrible time has taught us anything, it's that most things can wait. You know, like, take a ticket. Tidying and organizing. I only have so much bandwidth, and I'm not gonna spend that color coordinating all the crafting supplies. I will be over here snoozing. And utilize hacks to get things done in half the time. All of my best cleaning tips and tricks are right here to help you get that job done much easier. Because you've already got enough to be doing. Until then, stay safe, stay sane, stay positive, and stay sanitized. Go have me, Lamagwe. Slon.